This Week in Connecticut with Dennis House starts now. Greetings and welcome to a special edition of This Week in Connecticut as we look at the race for the U.S. Senate. Three Republicans, Themis Claritus, Leora Levy and Peter Lumage will face off in a primary next month to see who will take on Democrat Richard Blumenthal in November. A poll in May, the WTNH Emerson College The Hill Poll, showed Blumenthal leading Claritus by 10 points and Lumage and Levy by 16 points. In the past few months, we've interviewed all three Republicans, and today we bring you those interviews once again together. First, the party's endorsed candidate, former House Minority Leader Themis Claritus. Representative Claritus, good to see you here in the program. Always glad to be here. So first of all, your reaction to the poll numbers. Well, listen, polls are always a snapshot in time, right? So I, I think that they're great. But my, my biggest excitement is traveling around the state and getting such wonderful responses and excitement and passion from people in Connecticut who really want a change. In your judgment, what makes you a better candidate than Leora Levy and Peter Lumash? Well, a few things. First of all, I'm the only candidate in the race who's ever won an election. I've won 11 elections in Democrat-leaning districts. Um, so it's, this is not time for on-the-job training. This is a, this is a big race. We we all believe that the United States is going to have a, a big Republican wave, but this is still a difficult race. We all understand that, and we need somebody who is a proven fighter, which I am, a proven winner, uh, which I am, and somebody who really understands Connecticut. For the past six years, I was the House Republican leader, and I crisscrossed this state more times than I can count, and I understand that even though we're the third smallest state in the country, we are one of the most diverse states. So I understand the differences between eastern and western and northern and southern Connecticut, and we need somebody who can actually win a general election in Connecticut. So for the viewers watching at home, they're saying, how would my life get better if there's a Senator Claritus instead of a Senator Blumenthal? What's your answer? Well, I wouldn't spend trillions of dollars as President Biden and Senator Blumenthal has done and borrowed uh, enormous amounts of money, which has caused inflation of 8.5%. I would make Connecticut more affordable by making uh, decisions and policies that are more fiscally responsible and fiscally conservative. I would make Connecticut more safe by not defunding the police, but funding the police. I've been so honored to have been endorsed by the Connecticut State Police because they know that Senator Blumenthal, who they used to endorse, does not care about keeping Connecticut safe, and they know that I do. I would allow parents and put policies forward that have parents controlling what their children are doing, and most importantly, having American citizens being able to make decisions for their own lives. I mean, the number one killer in the United States of America for 18 to 45 year olds is fentanyl. 90% of that comes over our Mexican borders. So when we talk about borders and borders, border control, we all came from somewhere, right? I mean, my grandparents came here from Greece for that wonderful American dream, which I'm fighting for every day in this U.S. Senate run. But we also have to make sure that we have it done legally and safely. You know, I want to talk about the issue of abortion, which is sometimes a delicate dance for Republicans, because nationally, the Republican Party is viewed as a pro-life party. In Connecticut, a lot of Republicans here tend to be pro-choice. Where do you stand on the issue? Are you pro-choice or pro-life? I'm pro-choice. I have been pro-choice uh, in my career uh, and in my life. Um, I support the Connecticut law. Uh, in which it's codified uh, and under Roe versus Wade. So in terms of uh, pro-life Republicans, you'll want their support, obviously, mm -hmm. across the state. What do you tell them when they say we don't believe in abortion? Well, I tell them, listen, I am pro-choice, but I certainly do not believe in abortion uh, as a form of birth control. I believe in personal responsibility. I believe in a pre-viability law that we have right now. I certainly don't believe in late-term abortions unless uh, the cases of rape, incest, and life or health of the mother. Um, and there's always a place for all of us to fall. You know, if you're a one issue voter, I understand that that's the issue you focus on. But for me, um, I support responsible, responsible and safe legislation. So just to mention a uh, former President Clinton, one thing that I did agree with him on was he said abortion should be legal, safe, and rare. And I agree with that. I want to talk about the Supreme Court because you'll have to vote for nominees if you're elected to the U.S. Senate. Would you have voted for Ketanji Brown Jackson? Well, as somebody who sat on the Judiciary Committee in the Connecticut Legislature for many years and heard many uh, Supreme Court justices, many trial court judges, appellate court judges, I understand that members of the committee are... Um, privy to information that the public isn't. So personal interviews, one-on-one -on -one conversations, information that the public isn't. Um, so hypothetically, I can't tell you whether I would or I wouldn't, but I can tell you this. I had concerns about her nomination, as everybody else did. But I do know this. 
I think that choosing ju judges and justices is one of the most important things we can do as United States senators. And I took that job very seriously in the Connecticut legislature, as opposed to our sitting senator, Dick Blumenthal, who if a Republican nominates somebody, he is against them off the bat. That is not a responsible way to do the job for the people of this country. I want to dig back into the poll numbers, and as you saw in our report, you did well among the independents as well, almost tied with uh, Senator Blumenthal. Uh, what's your message to those undecideds and the independents who may prefer him? What would you tell them? Well, I will tell them to, to keep a lookout and keep their eyes and ears open for what's going to happen between now and November when we bring the message to people that this is a man who does not represent Connecticut. This is a man who is loyal to Joe Biden, who has voted with him almost 100% of the time. And those policies have gotten us what? Eight and a half percent inflation, made this country unaffordable. They have gotten us unsafe streets by defunding the police. They have gotten us deaths of fentanyl, as I mentioned earlier. Number one death of 18 to 45 year olds because they're not doing anything to make the border safe and taking away your control over your life and your children's life. That is what the policies of Joe Biden and Dick Blumenthal uh, have given us. He is the Joe Biden of Connecticut and he is not representing you. Another one of the poll questions we talked about at the top of this broadcast, as you saw, was the age issue. There are people who are starting to ask questions about how old a politician should be. The issue of Senator Dianne Feinstein has been widely reported. There are some who now say she is mentally unfit. She's 88 years old. So 60% of our respondents say that there should be an age limit. A third say it should be 70, 17% say 75, and 11% say it should be 80. Where do you stand on this issue? Do you think there should be an age limit for politicians? I think it's something we should consider. There's no question. I mean, when you look at judges, I mean, even judges in the state of Connecticut at age 70, they, uh, they become what we call trial judge referees so they can't hear certain cases uh, without the parties agreeing to it. There's a reason for that uh, because because with age, you know, your, your memory gets uh, becomes different and, and not as sharp. Um, you, you may lose a step. So I think it's something we should consider. I don't know what the age would be. I would have to, you know, do certainly do research scientifically as to what age um, people would be considered uh, less on their game. But it's something that I would be open minded to. Do you believe 80 is too old? You know, it's hard to say. I don't know. I don't know if 75 is too old. I don't know if 80 is too old, but it's something that I, I mean, we would have to look at scientific research to, re to figure out, you know, when the brain starts to slow down and to what extent it does. And I think those are the decisions, how you make those decisions. What's the first thing you'll do if elected? First thing that you'll propose in the Senate? Well, I would, the first thing I would propose would be would be a balanced budget and the stop spending trillions of dollars that have given us inflation of eight and a half percent to make this state less affordable. Then Ms. Clarinus, candidate for U.S. Senate, the endorsed candidate by the state GOP. We thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. And best of luck. And I just want to reiterate, of course, that interview was taped back in May. The poll numbers I was referring to in that interview are in are on our website right now. You can take a deep dive and read them. They're pretty fascinating. Later in this broadcast, Leo Levy and Peter Lumash. We'll be right back with more This Week in Connecticut in just a moment.